Here with me now is Texas Congressman Democrat Colin Allred, who is running against Ted Cruz for the United States Senate. Congressman, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, well, it's good for, good for you to be here. So, how do you see this abortion issue playing in in Texas, but in your race yeah. against Ted Cruz? Well, first of all, it's heartbreaking, and my heart uh, goes out to Kate, uh, to her family, uh, everything she's had to go through. She's had to go to the emergency room four times. Her physician has said she needs a medically necessary abortion. She's appealed to her state to allow her to do that close to home, and they've said no. And this is the result of decades of extremists pushing us to this position, to where we now have a near total ban on abortion in the state of Texas. And this is what it looks like as a mother of two having a complicated pregnancy and having to leave our state. And it's unacceptable, uh, and we have to do something about it, and we can by codifying Roe v. Wade at the federal level. What, what is the mood in Texas, though, about this? I mean, do you think that this is going to become a, a driving issue, especially yeah. for women voters? I mean, I think people are just outraged. I mean, I know my wife and I are. We've had two boys in Dallas in the last five years. Our boys are four and two, not that uh, different than the ages of Kate's kids. And, um, you know, I think people are outraged because they, they can all imagine themselves in this position. I know that we held our breath every time we had a doctor's appointment. The doctor comes in to tell you the results of these genetic tests. Uh, and I can't imagine if at one of those meetings the doctor said there's a problem with the baby, uh, but there's nothing we can do because politicians have decided that they know better than I do what's best for your, uh, your, your medical treatment. Uh, that is, I think, outraging everyone. I've gotten so many people reaching out to me. I know my wife has as well uh, because, you know, for every Texan, this is very personal, I think. The Arizona, New Mexico, Wyoming have similar cases pending. Yeah. And these, and also the Supreme Court has just taken the abortion pill case. Yes. So, which now is that medication abortions are now used, at least according to the most recent data, by uh, half, at least half mm -hmm. of the people seeking yeah. these procedures. Yeah. So, this is all trending in a in, in a more restrictive yeah. direction. It is, and it's also trending with uh, lawyers. You know, I went to law school. I was a lawyer. Uh, uh, making decisions that medical professionals should be making, that the FDA, in the case of Mifepristone, should be making. These folks are not qualified to make these decisions. Ken Paxton, our attorney general, Ted Cruz, are not qualified to make these decisions for a woman. They're not qualified uh, to make these medical determinations, and they shouldn't be. And for 50 years, we had a standard that I think Americans came to expect and understand. Yes, we had a lot of disagreement around it. Uh, but we're now in a position where we have a kind of balkanization of rights in our country. And in states like Texas, women have fewer rights. But we can do something about it uh, in the next election. Uh, we can elect me and beat Ted Cruz and make sure that we codify Roe v. Wade. So I'm asking folks if you can, if, you're, if this is something you know we have to do something about, go to ColinAllred.com and get involved with us. Let me ask you, on um, switching gears for a moment, the border, you're yeah. a border state. You come from a border state. Yeah. The border you know, is tying up Ukraine and Israel mm -hmm. money, according to the House Republicans. Uh, do you see any resolution, and is it worth the sacrifice yeah. um, from your posture on asylum, on Title 42 or other? You know, are you worried that the White House is now going to go hard line and just to cut a deal for the foreign aid? You're a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Well, I am a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I think it's critically important uh, that we support, you know, three democracies uh, in uh, you know, Israel uh, and Taiwan and, of course, Ukraine, to make sure they can defend themselves. Uh, particularly Ukraine is dependent on it. I've seen you've been covering it this morning. Uh, this is a decision that will go down in history. If the United States Congress fails to support them, uh, then Putin will win, and he's already doing victory laps uh, in Russia because of this. But it's also true that the border is in crisis, and we do need changes made there. And I think we are trying to offer uh, common sense changes that we can make, but we need to have a partner who actually accepts something. And I'm, I worry that we have too many members, uh, my colleagues and also in the Senate, uh, who don't actually want to do anything to solve our issues at the border and just want the political issue. Because if you try and do anything to fix it, then you can't use it in the next election. But are you worried that the White House might cut a deal and, t and go for the harder line? Yeah. Well, I think we do need to make some a deal or support, here. Or do you support and, that? Well, I think, you know, obviously it depends on the details. But, I, you know, I think that we do need to make some changes. And the asylum policy is not something that we can handle, you know, all of the kind of ills of Central and Southern America uh, just through asylum. That, that's not going to work. And I, 
you know, as you said, I'm from a border state. I've been to our border checkpoints, talked to our CBP officers. You know, they've got a, a real job on their hands dealing not only with this surge of migrants, but also fentanyl. They need more resources, so we should do something there. So it sounds like you're a gettable vote on that issue. No. Well, I think it's important that we do make a change there, but also, to me, these two issues should have never been tied together, and I think it's a shame that they have been.